make a piece of glass that's a tall footed pitcher. So we start here at the furnace where we have molten liquid glass inside. It's about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So I reach in there and I gather glass out by dipping the blowpipe into the furnace and spinning the pipe. The glass kind of wraps up around the end of the pipe. Then I take it to this station here where I'm rolling the glass in a steel cup. We call a block. And then I roll it on a metal plate. We call a marver. By rolling it on this plate, I can start to shape it into a nice even cylinder. And right now, I'll actually blow air into the glass to make it hollow. We take it to this station and use a few more tools. This is a wet piece of cherry wood we call a paddle. My breath and this pair of metal tongs we call jacks to elongate a neck for this piece. I'll kind of cut a groove in it up here. This is called a neckline. It's going to be a, a guide so that when we go to break this off, it'll have a nice guideline created so that it'll come free. One more touch up on the bottom of the pitcher and then we're ready to add the next piece of glass to it. We're going to cut off some hot glass on the bottom to make a, a, a base or a foot. So I've got another glass blower that's bringing some more hot glass from the furnace. And then we'll actually cut off the appropriate amount onto the bottom of this because the two pieces of glass are very hot. They fuse together permanently. And then I can use another one of those wet cherry wood paddles to flatten the base. This pair, you know, these tools here are called jacks, like I was talking about. They're kind of the primary tool for glass making. We use them in kind of a wide variety of different ways to do various shaping to the glass. Now we're ready for the next phase, which uh, we've got to get it off of this pipe and transfer it to a second rod called a ponto rod. That rod has a little bit of glass on the tip of it, which sticks to the piece of glass I have here so that we can shape the other end of it. Before we can shape that glass we have to do uh, some reheating to it. It's not hot enough to shape unless the piece is over about 1400 degrees. So we take it back to this, called a glory hole, which is a reheating chamber that's just got really hot fire in it. And I'm just trying to melt or soften the top half of that, mainly the neck, so that I can shape it some more and add a spout to it to make it a pitcher. Once it's real soft, I'll pull it out of here, take it to the working bench again. I'll use those jacks once again to stretch open the top, shape the spout. In the meantime, somebody else is preparing some hot glass that's going to be applied to create a handle. I'm 
drop that on there and use these glass cutting shears to cut off what we need and use some tweezers to shape it. You've got kind of a short amount of time to actually shape that hot glass while it remains hot. As soon as it starts to cool off, you can start to see it getting stiffer. And the last phase will be to remove it from the pontel rod and take it to the annealing oven where it's gonna sit and cool down real slow all night long tonight. If we don't cool that glass very slowly, that glass will eventually break. That's it. That's it. So yeah, we should retake that because that one cracked.